Jasmine. Then the Siddiqeen, the most truthful people. If you're absolutely honest, then you get the title of the Siddiqeen. And then the next celebrities will be who? They will be the Shuhada, the martyrs. And the next celebrities will be Salihin, the pious people. And these people, subhanAllah, they will get a place on the Day of Judgment that no other person will get and everyone will wish that they were in their place. What is that place? They will be under the Arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will be under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the whole of the Day of Judgment, whole of the mankind from adam alayhi salam till the last person of the day of the until the day of judgment everybody will try and get under the shade with them but only a few people will be entered amongst these celebrities only a few people now i'm not going to go into that but the greatest of celebrities of the anbiya and the greatest amongst them of celebrities is muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is our prophet for without him there is no intercession on the day of judgment and without our prophet he says sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says ana i am the first person to lift my head on the day of judgment ana biyadi liwa'ul hamd on the day of judgment i will have i will have the flag of praise in my hand Whoever will be behind the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will be from the Sabiqun Al-Awwaloon, the first and the foremost to enter Jannah. Whoever will be with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will be the first to enter Jannah. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Ana awwalu man yadkhulul Jannah. I am the first one that will enter Jannah on the Day of Judgment. Without him, no one will enter Jannah. No one will go into paradise. Now Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has that future. And the past that he has had with us is, the Prophet ﷺ has sacrificed the great portion of his life so that Iman will reach us. Because he wants us, he wants me and you, whoever you are, he wants us to go to Jannah with him. That was his biggest concern. To the extent that Allah says, O Messenger, you are about to destroy yourself. You are about to... Because Rasulullah ﷺ grief was so much that that grief is it was a killing grief he used to sit there and he used to think about the people who haven't entered islam and if they haven't entered islam his his continuous thought was with them how will they enter islam and how will i save them from the from, from the fire of hell allah says you will almost destroy yourself following their footsteps and trying to get them to come into this religion allah had to console the prophet Imagine the Prophet ﷺ to what he went through in his lifetime. Just a few examples. Ta'if, where he got stoned. He got stoned from head to toe he was bleeding. In Uhud, he got hit so bad that the spike of his helmet went straight into his jawbone. And he, two of his beloved teeth were broken. Sallallahu Alaihi was in the pit on the, on, you know, under the ground. And the enemies were trying to kill the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet Sallallahu to the extent that in Khandaq and in the battle of the trenches, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when his companions came to him and they said, Messenger of Allah, we are so hungry and starving, digging this trench, that we've got a stomach, on our stomachs, we've got a rock on our stomachs, just to keep the, the hunger down. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lifted his garment and he showed that he had two stones on his, two large stones on his stomach to keep his hunger down. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to pray tahajjud until his feet used to swell. And Sayyidatuna Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, Why do you do this, Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He said, Afala uhibbu an akuna abdan shakura. Should I, not, should I not love to be a good and thankful servant to my Lord? Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would cry over the fact that his ummah, if anything happened to his ummah, this was a grief to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If anything happened to us, this was a grief to him. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the Quran it says, Quran says that, Azizun alayhi ma anittum. Azizun alayhi ma anittum in Surah Tawbah, the last verse of Surah Tawbah, the ninth surah of the Holy Quran. That anything that, that, that is, is hurtful to you, it is a burden to the Prophet. Harisun alaykum. He is one that he used to always be covetous, always try to bring the best for you. Now he sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he had his ways. Now his ways, his ways sallallahu alayhi wasallam. What is, what is it now for us to follow the ways of the Prophet We know who the Prophet is now. We know his sunnah, what his sunnah is. And now it is about us. Prophet has given us certain instructions. And these instructions he has given us are until the Day of Judgment. One of the things he has told us is, 
He has said in a hadith of Muslim, he says, فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الْحَدِيثِ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ The best of speeches is the book of Allah. وَخَيْرُ الْحَدِّ هَدْيُ مُحَمَّدْ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ And the best guidance that anyone can give you is the guidance of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. That's in a hadith of Muslim. Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم further he has said in a hadith of Mu'atta by Anas bin Malik, sorry, Malik bin Anas رضي الله عنه which is a hadith where he says that the Prophet said, Taraktu fikum amrain. I have left behind and I'm going to leave behind me two things. Lan tadillu ma tamassaktum bihima. You will never go astray if you hold on to both of these things. Kitab Allahi wa sunnata rasuli. I am leaving number one, the book of Allah. And number two, I am leaving this, my way or the way of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa These two things Prophet sallallahu is leaving. Now there are some people that might want to divide between the two things. They might say, well, the book of Allah is enough. Why do we need the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's you know, message? And how important is the Prophet Sallallahu message? In a hadith of Abu Dawood and Darmi and Ibn Majah, there's a narration from Miqdam bin Ma'adi Karab, radiyallahu anhu, who says that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Ala inni utitu al-Qur'an wa mithlah ma'a. Remember that I have been given the Qur'an, I have, I have been given the Qur'an, and I have been given something similar to the Qur'an. Ala yushiku rajulun. Remember that there will come a time when a man will be full to his stomach. Ala arikatihi. He will be reclining on a couch or reclining on a chair or something. يَقُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ بِهَذَا الْقُرْآنِ He will say to you, hold on to this Qur'an. Whatever you find in this, in this Qur'an of halal, it is halal. And whatever you find in the Qur'an to be haram is haram. And that is enough for you. Rasulullah sallallahu said, وَإِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ كَمَا حَرَّمَ اللَّهِ And I am telling you what the messenger of Allah myself, whatever I make forbidden to you, that is to the equivalent of what Allah makes forbidden to you. Prophet sallallahu showed his, his disapproval of this man in the future. Whoever will be this from the ummah. And we know these people exist today. There are people who divide between the Qur'an and Sunnah. They say that the Sunnah is not important, the Qur'an is important. And these people, they will not be next to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the Day of Judgment. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, He has said, This is, a, this is in Tirmidhi by Ali radiallahu anhu who says, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man ahya sunnatan min sunnati Whosoever will revive a sunnah, uh, who, Rasulullah Sallallahu says, Whosoever will revive a way of mine from amongst the ways that I've shown you, from amongst my sunnah, whoever, whoever will revive a sunnah. Umitat ba'di. That has basically been forgotten after me. A sunnah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that has been left aside. No one is acting upon the sunnah. Faqad ahabbani. That person who will ever will do that, he will definitely love me. He will definitely have love for me. وَمَنْ أَحَبَّنِي كَانَ مَعِي And whosoever will love me will be with me. Whosoever will love me will be with me. This is a hadith of Tirmidhi. In fact, the Rasulullah has said that the completion of our iman depends upon the completion of our iman depends upon following the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sunnah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, this is a hadith in Sharh al-Sunnah, Imam Nawawi has said this is sahih, he has included this in his 40, um, uh, you know, his famous 40 hadith. An Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu anhu qala, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la yu'minu ahadukum hatta yakuna hawahu tabi'an o tabi'an lima, lima jittu bih. Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu anhu, he says, Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu anhu, he says, that the Prophet ﷺ said, none of you will truly believe until his whole desires become in accordance to my way. They ho his whole desires or her whole desires and her whole way of being in this world become something in accordance to what I have bought. In fact, the Quran says in Surah Al-Hashr, وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوا